I am grateful for YouTube and I'm grateful for this platform, but there have been a lot of changes this year that adversely affect independent creators. And there's a major one coming on January 1st. So if you can please subscribe to the channel and like and share the videos as much as possible, I would appreciate it. And your favorite YouTuber would appreciate it. And I appreciate your continued support. How far along are you guys shot on uh, to having the film come out? Uh, the show, film comes out in December. So you're three, 80%? Oh, you mean how far along? Yeah. Oh, it's hard to say. I mean, some things are 100%, some things are 2%. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I have to do the math. NerdErotic.com. Another day and some more Star Wars news. We've had leaks, we've had rumors, but we just got a Jar Jar Abrams interview in Entertainment Weekly that was held at the end of October. Now, part of what we do here together is cut through the BS and cut through the Hollywood speak. And I think this article is a great example of this. Jar Jar Abrams in this interview both gets everybody excited for the rise of Skywalker while tempering expectations. And he also confirms there was reshoots and that they're still working on the film. Now we're going to go back and forth between the Entertainment Weekly source article and bounding in the comics. My good friend John F. Trent sent me this article that he wrote, which kind of breaks through the BS and keeps this from being a 30-minute video. Jar Jar Abrams confirms Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker not finished. So much is still being worked on. Well, that's very contradictory from what I've heard from a lot of people's inside sources who are debunking other people's inside sources. And certainly it's Jar Jar Abrams contradicting himself. And he does that a couple of times and we will get to that. Star Wars, the Rise of Skywalker director Jar Jar Abrams confirmed that the film doesn't seem anywhere near finished as it nears a month from its planned release date. Interestingly enough, the Entertainment Weekly article tries to defend Jar Jar Abrams by saying that this interview was held in late October. Well, that was a couple of weeks ago, so it wasn't that long ago. Abrams spoke to Entertainment Weekly saying, we always knew we were going to have three fewer months to post-production this film. He then adds, so much is still being worked on. It's literally a practical race to get it finished. Now, nobody expects these creatives or repurposers, as I like to call them, to come out and tell us the truth. That is why we do what we do. But they give so many interviews, they can't help but contradict themselves, especially when things are in flux as much as they are behind the scenes at Lucasfilm. And the one thing I do know is Lucasfilm is compartmentalized. So there could be a lot of people leaking certain tidbits from the film, but I'm guessing precious few know the entirety of the plot. But Jar Jar Abrams here ends up throwing shade on previous work, trying to bolster the rise of Skywalker. However, Abrams revealed he's feeling infinitely better about where the rise of Skywalker is compared to The Force Awakens. Wow, I thought The Force Awakens was just a dream, although it was delayed and you were making it up as you went. He goes on to detail that he had more reshoots and more adjustments for The Force Awakens than The Rise of Skywalker. Well, that is not a denial of reshoots and adjustments for The Rise of Skywalker. You just said you had more on The Force Awakens. Again, a film you were making it up as you went. We had more reshoots on Episode 7 than this one. We had more story adjustments on Episode 7 than this one. Thou doth protest too much. We didn't know if these characters would work, if the actors would be able to carry a Star Wars movie, and they haven't. There were a lot of things we didn't know, and there's a lot of things we still don't know about these characters. On this, we knew who and what worked. Yeah, not a lot. Keep it as paper thin as possible. And everyone is doing the best work I've ever seen anyone do on The Rise of Skywalker. He can't be serious about that. And there's more later on this, and it gets a bit much. Abrams then details The Rise of Skywalker is far more challenging. It must be because he actually has to finish a story. But the ambition of this movie is far greater than Force Awakens. Everything's better than the last thing I did. What we set out to do was far more challenging. Again, finishing something. Everything is exponentially larger on this one, and that's Jar Jar Abrams' solution for everything. Pack as much as you can in the screen because we don't have much of a script. And a quick reminder, 
with apologies to all of the release the Snyder Cut fans out there, Chris Terrio from Batman vs. Superman and Justice League co-wrote this film, not Lawrence Kasdan. And if Lawrence Kasdan couldn't pull it off, I'm guessing Jar Jar Abrams and Chris Terrio can't either. He then teases that the two and a half trailers that have been released for the film are scratching the surface of what the movie is. Probably visually, I'm doubting there's much story there except for the shocks we're going to get towards the end of the film and the subverting of expectations. In fact, Abrams revealed to EW that there are action scenes from the film that have not been showcased in the trailers. Probably the final battle between the Emperor, Rey, and Kylo, where Kylo falls to his death and we never find out what happens to him. That's probably one of those unanswered questions that we're going to get to in just a second. Rumors about the rise of Skywalker indicate there are multiple cuts of the film with radical changes to the story in each of the different cuts. In fact, one of the cuts reportedly brought in George Lucas to introduce a new secret Skywalker. And those, of course, are from my friend and co-host of the Inquisition and the Exozone, Doomcock. Please be sure to tune in every Sunday and Thursday for the respective shows. Now, as far as those rumors are concerned, I don't know. I've always said I don't know. These are rumors, and that's all they've been talked about as. They have been running across the internet. They've got a lot of people interested because I think a lot of people just expect the Rise of Skywalker to be a giant dumpster fire. Is this stuff going to happen in that film? I'm not really that sure, but I do believe that they are scrambling. I do believe they are desperate. I do believe they're in a panic and, you know, it's understandable. They have decided to take on the task of calling this the Skywalker Saga so they can fit it nicely into their D-plus streaming service and just making this another Star Wars story and not the main one. And it looks like... It's just going to be turning the page, like I've said before, and completely forgotten about. And hey, look at the Mandalorian. And we'll talk about that in a second, too. Although I like it, I think there was a bit of a hoodwink there. I think there was a bit of a bait and switch with how short those episodes are. But we continue. One rumor from the middle of October prior to the Jar Jar Abrams interview with Entertainment Weekly detailed that Lucasfilm and Disney had to rework almost the entire film. I had received this from my insider and I didn't believe it. And this is when I checked with Jeremy's insider to see if it was true. And he said, no, but Jar Jar Abrams just confirmed there was reshoots and there was people out there saying there weren't reshoots at all, or we were confusing them with pickups. No, Jar Jar Abrams just said that there were less reshoots on this one than the force awakens, meaning there were reshoots. How much? We're not really sure. Abrams quotes will more than likely not settle any fears fans might have that the film is a complete mess. In fact, he appears to be confirming those fears, noting they are crunching to get the film finished, making excuses, saying we had three months less in post-production for this one. Well, you still had plenty of time and... This should be a well-oiled machine by now. Lucasfilm has been doing this for quite some time. Now, I may be wrong on this one, but I don't recall hearing about delays from any Marvel films. Now, there might be ones out there, but nothing really comes to mind. As far as Abrams saying he feels better about the rise of Skywalker, well, he should. He's got a half a billion dollars in his bank account from Warner Brothers, and he can just take off and work for the competition. He said that multiple times while promoting the film. Back in May, he detailed the difference in his approach between The Force Awakens and The Rise of Skywalker. Working on Nine, I found myself approaching it slightly different. Yeah, in The Force Awakens, you were starting something, and in The Rise of Skywalker, you were destroying something. I mean, ending something. Now, while you have destroyed a franchise before Star Trek, you haven't really finished one. Which is to say that on 7, I felt beholden to Star Wars in a way that was interesting. In other words, you might have felt accountable to the fandom? Yeah, that is interesting, and you decided to ditch that, just like Rian Johnson did. I was doing what, to the best of my ability, I felt Star Wars should be be flying by the seat of your pants and copying more talented people's work yeah typical jar jar abrams 
He then detailed how the rise of Skywalker is different. In other words, how it won't be Return of Return of the Jedi, but I'm guessing it will be. I felt slightly more renegade. It felt slightly more like, you know, F it. I'm going to do the thing that feels right because it does, not because it adheres to something. And we've heard that before. That's where he talked about being inspired by Rianne Johnson, which should tell everyone that this might be worse than The Last Jedi. And there's some indicators that I'll get at the end of the video that might tell us it will be. Now, if we go back to the EW interview, Jar Jar says this, while the film is introducing new characters, Abrams insists... Rise of Skywalker won't set up a future story. He's not leaving loose threads for Disney to hang another trilogy directly onto the back of this one. Lucas's original dream of an intergalactic tale about a farm boy from Tatooine is at last about to set. Although the Disney Star Wars trilogy hasn't been about that farm boy, has it? Now remember that interview with Jar Jar Abrams with Entertainment Weekly was at the end of October. Digital spy Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker star admits movie will leave fans with questions. There might still be more questions and that's the whole point. Well... It doesn't sound like they're on the same page to me. Naomi Aki, who will play the helpful warrior Jaina in the upcoming film, has admitted that fans will still be asking questions when the series comes to a close. But that's the whole point entirely. No, actually, when you're ending the Skywalker saga, we don't want any more questions. There weren't any more questions after Return of the Jedi. Hinting at an open-ended story, Naomi also told Metro that Star Wars fans will ultimately be divided by the conclusion. While considering we already are, I'm guessing it's going to be more of a Game of Thrones situation where it's going to be very lopsided towards one direction. There are some people that leave it that might feel like they've gotten everything they wanted, she explains. I'm pretty sure John Campia will love it. But there might still be more questions, and that's the whole point. The story continues. I'll ask the same questions I asked before. Disney, why did you decide to spend $4 billion and then destroy two of the greatest characters in science fiction that could have made you a lot of money in the future? You have lost sales. Sure, Star Wars has made a lot of money, but it could have made a lot more. And this is something these companies think about. And if you don't think the agenda is going to be there, he, Kylo, had all of these pseudo father figures that he had to either live up to or literally kill to become his own person for the first time, the actor says. And they're talking about Daisy Ridley. And this is how Kylo can be redeemed because he just killed his father and that doesn't really matter in Hollywood. But there's more. Again, this is from the EW interview with Jar Jar. Abrams says of bringing back inexplicably the iconic space station, this is a story of people having to grapple with the burden the prior generation dumps on those that follow. Luke Skywalker dumped on Rey. It's all his fault. And thank God a woman is there to clean it up. So literally returning to this wreck of the past and having to fight it out felt like an obvious metaphor, but also felt incredibly cinematic. Oh, Jar Jar. But the worst crime is bringing back Palpatine and undoing Anakin and Luke's sacrifice, like I've said before, to elevate a character that is as beige as her clothing. There's at least one key player we haven't discussed. Palpatine's return may be the most closely guarded storyline in the film. How is the Emperor, who Vader tossed into the Death Star's reactor core, back in a seemingly corporeal form? That's a very good question. But I do believe some of the Reddit theories actually answer that. And it turns out, and you might want to plug your ears for this one, the Emperor was a clone in The Return of the Jedi that was being controlled from somewhere else which is ripping off Dark Empire. And, well, that's right in line for Jar Jar Abrams. He rips off people, in my opinion. And, again, completely screwing the original trilogy. This has been a very long chess match that's been played between the Jedi and the Sith, all the way back to the very beginning, Oscar Isaac teases, 
It's an amazing thing to see that really come to the forefront. Oh, I'm sure it is. But we will end it with this, because we know Disney Star Wars is in a panic, but Jar Jar isn't because he's got that half bill in a bank and another franchise waiting for him to come and screw up. And yet, in another way, the final Skywalker Saga film, which has nothing to do with the Skywalker Saga, the Rey Saga, is very much about the future of the franchise, which we know is the Mandalorian and D+. Star Wars will continue to exist in an omniscient force-like fashion. I wouldn't count on that, to be honest with you. In everything from toys to TV shows to video games to theme parks, but new movies have always been the brand's creative core. Since buying Lucasfilm in 2012, Disney movies in a galaxy far, far away peaked early at the box office with The Force Awakens and sunk to their lowest level with the most recent entry, 2018's Soylo, A Star Wars Story. And now it's funny that they bring that up. The Hollywood Reporter came out with an article back on the 14th on can YouTube views predict box office openings, but they didn't mention Star Wars, but they did mention the Joker. Now we're not going to go over the entire article, but I highly recommend you read it. You can search it. Can YouTube trailer views predict box office openings? And it looks like they can. And they use the Joker as an example. The Joker got 75 million views per trailer and that is the most recent example and now it's obviously not fair to compare the rise of skywalker to the views on youtube of the force awakens trailer because there are years apart and it got 104 million views the follow-up the last jedi got half that at 53 million views and the box office difference is very similar in percentage in the domestic box office and if you look at the rise of skywalker it got 33 million views and 28 million views half of what the last jedi got now again the most recent example of a blockbuster film is the joker which got over 75 million views on the teaser and over 75 million views on the main trailer it did a billion dollars without china and it looks like the Rise of Skywalker is going to have to do the same. Now, I'm not going to say The Rise of Skywalker is going to be a flop, but it may be a disappointment in Disney Star Wars standards, especially considering how much it costs. But if you compare The Rise of Skywalker trailers directly against the Joker trailers, each Joker trailer has 50 million more views. And if that's an indicator for opening weekend box office, that might not be good news. And the last thing from the Jar Jar Abrams EW interview, The Rise of Skywalker might very well turn out to be a full-fledged reunion special of Force Ghosts. And what are the rules that govern the Jedi and the Sith spirit realm anyway? Obi-Wan Kenobi said in Empire Strikes Back that he cannot interfere with Luke's fight with Vader, but in The Last Jedi, Yoda suddenly called down the lightning strike. What can Force Ghosts do or not do in our world? Abrams' reply to that key question is pretty much what you'd expect, and pretty much what you should expect from the end of The Rise of Skywalker. That's probably best answered, the director says, by not answering it. At the end of The Rise of Skywalker, there will be no questions except for all the questions you're going to have. There were absolutely no reshoots except for the fact that we're still working on the film. And while you can't satisfy everyone, you should walk away satisfied. We're about a month away from The Rise of Skywalker, and I'm going to use my keen, psychic, Nerdstradamus abilities to guess that there will be leaks and rumors, a lot of them, until the film is released. And I'm guessing a lot of them will be wrong. And you know what? That's okay. It's good that we're going to get more of them. It's fun. It's content. It keeps the conversation going. It keeps people's mind off things. It's stuff I used to do at my comic shop. Talk about this crap all day. I love it. So keep it coming. And to all those YouTubers who have shown what I'm sure is a genuine concern for my friend Doomcock and how he goes about business on his own channel, unsolicited advice, mind your business, concentrate on your own channel, and concentrate on entertaining Everybody, remember, we're just having fun here. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Nerdorotic.com. Please subscribe.